This PowerPoint will review management of the airway after total laryngectomy. A total laryngectomy is a surgical procedure that removes all of the voice box. This means that the airway, or trachea, is separate from the mouth, throat, and esophagus, and breathing occurs only through a stoma. A stoma is a hole in the front of the neck just above the breastbone. This hole directly connects to the trachea, or windpipe. The stoma is the only route for breathing in a patient who has had a total laryngectomy. A patient with a total laryngectomy may or may not have a tube in their stoma, which differs from a tracheostomy. This will be explained later on in greater detail. A patient who has had a total laryngectomy is also known as a neck breather. This means they only breathe through the stoma in their neck. Their mouth and throat are connected only to the esophagus. This is significant because intubation through the mouth will not work, and thus the stoma is the only route for both intubation and ventilation. Patients who have had a total laryngectomy may wear a medical alert bracelet that states that they are a neck breather. The photograph in the middle shows the appearance of a typical laryngectomy stoma. The diagram on the right has a blue arrow which designates the airflow pattern in a laryngectomy patient. The laryngectomy stoma does not require a tube, but they are often used. They are called Larry tubes. You may also see patients with heat and moisture exchangers, or HMEs, in place. An HME is a small filter device that overlies the stoma. Normally, the upper airway serves to warm, humidify, and filter air from the external environment. In total laryngectomy patients, the connection to the upper airway is lost, and thus the HME serves to replace those functions. This helps to prevent excessive mucus buildup and crusting within the trachea. The photo on the left shows a completely open laryngectomy stoma. The photo in the middle shows a laryngectomy with a Larry tube in place. And finally, the photo on the right shows a laryngectomy with an HME in place. It is important to note that a tracheostomy differs from a laryngectomy stoma in several ways. First and foremost, a patient with a tracheostomy still has a larynx, or voice box. This means that the patient still has a connection from the nose and mouth to the airway, and if necessary, they can be intubated from above. When managing a laryngectomy airway, the most important piece of information to remember is that the stoma cannot be covered at any time. If present, remove the laryngectomy tube, base plate, or HME to completely expose the stoma. Providers should not try to cover the stoma with a dressing or intubate these patients from above because again, the stoma is the only source for ventilation and intubation. If the patient has a respiratory event requiring ventilator support, either an endotracheal tube or cuffed tracheostomy tube can be placed into the laryngectomy stoma. The endotracheal tube will only have to be placed a short distance before reaching the carina. Because laryngectomy stomas are larger than trach stomas, a cuffed trach tube can easily be placed into the laryngectomy stoma. It can then be secured with regular trach ties around the patient's neck. If intubation or ventilation through the stoma is unsuccessful, consider a tracheal obstruction. It is not uncommon for obstructive crusts to form within the airway or within the stoma itself. Visible crusts should be removed with forceps. If at any point there is a question or challenge, otolaryngology should be contacted immediately. If otolaryngology is unavailable, general surgery or your institution's airway management team should be consulted. It is also important to consider a pulmonary etiology, for example, comorbid COPD, as an etiology of hypoxia in these patients. In regard to the current coronavirus pandemic, there is no definitive data on how to best care for and manage laryngectomy and tracheostomy patients. We do know that there is increasing evidence of asymptomatic transmission of the virus. 
We also know that laryngectomies and tracheostomies generate respiratory droplets. Thus, we do anticipate an increased risk of transmission to providers who are taking care of laryngectomy and tracheostomy patients. We also anticipate an increased risk of infection and serious illness with associated comorbidities in this patient population. That being said, you, as a provider, should protect yourself. When interacting with all patients, including those who are asymptomatic and at low risk for having the virus, you should be wearing PPE. This may include an N95 mask, face shield, gown, gloves, and head cover. A PAPR is preferred for patients who are deemed high risk if they are currently under investigation or if they are known to be COVID positive. Other guidelines to follow when examining patients include maintaining a closed examination space and covering open airways, including laryngectomies and tracheostomies. There are a number of ways you can provide coverage over an open airway. And there are a variety of devices which can help mitigate the risk of droplet and aerosol spread. For laryngectomy patients, this includes a Larry tube or an adhesive base plate with an HME. For tracheostomy patients, this includes a Passimir valve or trach cap, a trach HME, an inline suction and HME, or simply a surgical mask over the lumen. The Passimir valve, HME, and adhesive base plate are shown in the figures on the right. 